The idea of uh, an event was to put together people from high-end culture, from cultural institutions, and uh, a tech nerds, so to say, those who really hands-on create new reality, uh, which from public media we hear to uh, represent a threat. And then we're going to discuss the need for what we are calling a competence centre to facilitate interaction between AI developers, musicians and cultural institutions for the common good. It's not just the next step of digitalization. it's really a new way of uh, working with technology. It's this change from automatization to autonomization that I think is the best way to describe this paradigm shift. And the project raises very interesting questions about the future of creative collaboration, including the interaction between humans, machines, and nature, and then the origin of creativity, including music, um, and the ownership of intellectual property and artworks created through the non-human interaction. I'm particularly excited about this because we can use AI to empower tuning systems and cultures outside of what I like to call the cultural majority, which is Western music. So technology is not neutral. And it's very important that when we're designing tools, such as music AI tools for creative purposes, that we think about ways to ensure that the technology can be used across a wide variety of different cultures. I always try to make the technology, to let, to let it disappear somehow that it is not really visible because I don't want art that is showing a technology. I really want the technology to be part of an artistic piece. For example, here um, I decided to take a part where I don't use language um, to take the unspeakable. Who am I? Who am I? Then I show you the voice clone choir. We will see a live demo now of, of, of Pia. So um, last week I used Pia to recompose two well-known classical pieces. And uh, Curtis was so um, nice to actually study those pieces now within a few days and also tra transcribe them actually in order to be able to perform them um, today for us. For me, there is a huge part about the body language and the personality a person can bring on stage, not only just the sound, but also the image and from the visual side. And now I just can see there's a chance that this concert experience will be replaced by AI in the short time or in the short term. One small, small notice when this wonderful interpretation of the Chopin Nocturne when it was these little interruptions uh, of uh, Pia, you remember these places, I tried to, not technically, but more spiritually, to focus to the problems uh, of the machine. The problems of the machine is that it doesn't ever been sick of tuberculosis. And that's essential, as Chopin has been. As regards a competence center. It seems to me that what is necessary is a crossroads at which intellectual fields, be they practical, applied or whatever, can meet and exchange ideas in a meaningful and effective way. Some sort of um, lighthouse project so, or lighthouse performance or whatever you want to call it, where um, engineers, musicians, use AI in order to create some performance, a holistic performance that is not only music, that is bringing together narratives. Maybe there is a need for more investment in this space, bigger collaborations between large cultural institutions like the Salzburg Festival, technologists like Ars Electronica that already experimented many years, and real musicians, real artists, real creators. I think uh, a kind of circle of maybe five, seven, or international places with a strong collaboration uh, is a better idea to, as to have one. The task is to create strategic course on uh, the way of learning how technology could become super productive for the purpose of a high culture. <laughs>